Hello and welcome to another of my videos on 6th edition Tyranids. Yay! Today we're going to be talking about the Hive Tyrant. This video took me a little longer to make than the other ones because the Hive Tyrant, the Hive Tyrant is just every man. It, it can be anything, anything, pretty much in your army. It, it, it has almost it has almost all of the options, all of the biomorphs, thorax, swarms, blah 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 blah. And my videos ended up becoming rambling 15 20 minute long sessions and I, I like to keep my videos to 10 minutes I don't want to be one of those people sitting here saying hey look this is this is the cover of the book it's a very nice book see the spine I like the spine of the book whatever um, so I'm just going to tell you what I do with the hive tyrant it's not the only thing you can do it's maybe probably not the best thing you can do I like to think it is because it's me but um here's what i do the tyrant is a general in the same way i use the swarm lord he's a general he's not really at least i don't use him as an attack unit this is how i use him i give him wings like most people do he flies around the table as a level two psyker he's going to get two powers hive mind powers hive mind powers all of them pretty much buff units in a certain range and he just flies around buffing units. The other good thing that he does, which makes it worth him have two, is the as Hive Commander. That allows you to nominate a unit, uh, a troop unit, and give it outflank. Which is also useful when you get the Turvigon, because if you get the 30 knots, and then you can get one Turvigon as a troop choice. So now you understand what to do with that. You get two Tyrants, Hive Commander, 60 knots, two Turvigons come in as on fl outflank, which now, since they're a troop choice, that makes them a scoring unit. And if that's not good enough, they create other troop choices, which makes them scoring units. So you've got a monstrous creature scoring unit that can come on on the side of the table, which creates other scoring units. Yeah. Try taking over those table corners when you got somebody doing that. It's it's pretty hard. And then on top of it, now that you understand, you got a hive tyrant flying around, casting all type of buffing spells. Now here's the key thing with the hive tyrant that I've really liked, the really killer strategy, and that's the flying nuclear psychic nuclear bomb. With all of the debuffs in the game to leadership especially if you've watched my Vanguard video where you now have uh, Paranoia which just gives a negative one leadership to everybody in a 12 inch range Psychic Scream 6 inch Nova Blast auto hit roll, roll 2d6 plus 2 the unit, uh, compare it to the unit's leadership and it takes that many wounds. Okay, you think, ah, that's not too much. Eh, let's look at it a little closer. You got these other abilities, psych uh, uh, Shadow in the Warp, another good thing the Hive Tyrant extends, which, um, if it's a psyching unit, it's now negative three leadership. You've got the Death Leaper. It's after me. Most of the time in the unit, you're rolling on the leadership of the character, not just any guy you want. Think about that. So now you get more Death Leapers in your army using the Vanguard rules. Uh, they can all throw It's After Me on so many other characters out there. That's another minus D3 off of their leaderships. So you now then could imagine a Hive Tyrant landing in the middle of these units at some point in time uh, during a turn and boom, just going, bah! literally or psychically. And uh, everybody now has to you compare that to everybody's leadership, which you can pretty easily get down to five or four. And with normal, uh, with, with all of these other debuffs. And boom, those whole units start taking easily six, seven, eight damage. So as I mentioned in another video, I wiped out two Grey Knight Terminator units doing that. Just wipe them out. Um... And it says that if you can, well, yeah, if you, on a, on, a, on our land raider, there was also a land raider, right? I tried that out once on a land raider, which caused a lot of debating over the rules since the Grey Knight still had psychic pilot. 
uh, I guess the game says that if you kill the um, if you kill the pilot, the driver, it counts as a glancing hit on the vehicle. So yes, Psychic Scream now even does glancing hits on any vehicle with a Psychic Pilot. Boom. Um, these are just some of the funs that I was having with it. A lot of it I have uh, I do with it is I extend the shadow in the warp range. Just fly it up and extend it. Catalyst has a 24-inch range. I talk about that in my Gene Stealer video to to force other units to make a pinning check. Minus two on their leadership. Once again, as I've said, with all the leadership debuffs like Paranoia, that can easily become a nine, minus three for any unit. Very nice control army tactic. Especially if you want, and, and, and here's the thing you're going to see. Mark my words, you're going to see Gene Stealer armies. You're going to see Gene Stealer armies, control Gene Stealer armies coming out with those brood lords all having catalyst. Your tyrant, your flyrants flying around with catalyst, making everybody make those rolls, make those rolls, and making them go to ground, which basically freezes them in their turn. In their turn, they do nothing but snapshots. Very nice. Yeah, Eldar, try that battle focus now. And that's what I do. That's the type of army I play. Um, so this is – other good ones are, you know, if, if, if he gets Warp Blast, then he's a flying Zoanthrope. How much do I need to describe about that? He's a flying throw and throw. He's got warp blast. The thing's just flying around, picking off uh, uh, any types of vehicles on the table. And and that's that. You know, with a leadership of 10, you don't worry too much about perils, perils of the warp. And, and if you do, then, then he takes a wound. Okay, give him regeneration. Very good chance that wound is um, is, is coming back. The other good one that I have with it is is indescribable horror. Indescribable horror makes you make your fear rolls when you charge the tyrant or with the tyrant on 3d6. Again, after everything you've just heard me say about nerfing, nerfing leadership, having to roll 3d6 to charge the tyrant is better than an invulnerable save in many cases. Yes, there are a lot of fearless and no no fear units out there, but a lot of the time there's also a lot of Tau and Eldar and Orc and Imperial Guard players out there, um, or non fearless. I'll just say non fearless players out there. This is pretty devastating. It it makes it almost impossible to charge a tyrant, uh, which I believe fits with the strategy that I use with the Tyrant, that he's not supposed to be really charging in the combat. He's supposed to be flying over the army or walking behind the army, casting the different hive mind power uh, buffs on the units as needed. This is what I said in my very first video on the overview of the Tyranids. They're masters at adaptation during the game. You go into a tournament... The people who win most of the times are the ones whose armies were able to adapt. Now, they try to adapt it with a fixed army list. What can I do? Make sure I'm ready for night fight. Make sure I'm ready for this. But the Tyranids, if you play it the way I play it, they adapt in-game to the situation with hive mind powers, giving people all of the type of special rules that they need according to the situations. And that's kind of why I have a difficulty explaining a lot of the tactics because it's all going to depend upon the situation in the game. Give yourself the options. Give yourself two tyrants or do whatever to, to, give, to, abil to give your units the abilities they need when they need it. Does that unit need to, you know, move at run and shoot on the turn that it comes in with a, from reserve? via deep strike or anything no problem i got catalyst that unit now can shoot and run on the same term with so many deep striking units or reserve units in your army if you do if you play them like i do very helpful flesh hooks are assault too 
So even your lictors coming in or anything like that uh, um, allows them to, to shoot and run on the turn they come in. And many times they can come in on turn two if, uh, if, if you do take the comms relay upgrades. What else can it do? You know, you feel no pain, obviously. Who's going to argue against that? You can give a unit feel no pain. Starting to go into the rambling stage again, this is what I mean. There are just so many options for the Hive Tyrant. I'm just giving you an idea about how I use it to the to what I think is the best of their abilities, which is as a general, modifying the and, and adapting the rest of your creatures as they need to be adapted during a game. And I hope you like that idea. And um, if you enjoy the video, please like. And... I'll be getting another one to you soon. Thank you very much.